Late at night, Yuga is preparing a new study plan to hone each girl's skills in their difficult areas. He recalls Fumino's need to get the gist of math problems, Riz's struggle with identifying characters' feelings and stories, and the need for Yuruka to enhance her reading skills. The next day, Rizu receives her practice exam and is excited, hoping for a good score. However, her face pales in shock when she sees she got an E. Meanwhile, in another room, Kaminami, Fumino, and Yuruka are discussing bra cup sizes after talking about a beach vacation. They get highly invested in the topic, and the further they indulge in the topic Fumino becomes conscious of her cup size and just then, Rizu arrives looking dispirited. The room goes silent, and Rizu tells them about her remarks. The girls misinterpret this as her cup size, leading Yuruka to think Riz's cup size has regressed from FDE. They console her in the wrong way. Rizu then asks them about their marks, referring to their practice exam results, but the girls think she means cup sizes. Kaminami and Yuruka openly discuss their sizes, while Fumino hesitates. Eventually, the misunderstanding is cleared up. However, Kaminami instills in Rizu that Yurga is a boob fiend, like other guys. When it is time for Yurga's tutoring session with Rizu at her family's restaurant, she keeps wondering if Yurga is interested in breasts. When Yurga asks about the E, Rizu panics, thinking he is asking about her cup size, and tells him she is actually a G cup. Yurga, thinking she means her grade, panics as G does not exist. In her confusion, Rizu pushes her chest towards him, asking if he would be happy if she allowed him to touch her breasts. Just then, her father sees them and sends Yurga out of the restaurant, severely scolding him. Once the misunderstanding is cleared up, Rizu is determined to improve her grades. The next day, Kaminami and the three girls are studying with Yuga. During the session, Rizu and Yuruka hear Fumino accidentally call Yuga by his first name, having done so during their stay at the inn. Yuruka refuses to respond until Yuga calls her by her first name, so everyone decides to use each other's first names. Later, due to mixed up bath signs, the three girls mistake the men's public bath for the women's. Yurga enters the bath and even shares shampoo with Fumino until they both realize the situation. They are shocked when Yurga's towel slips off in front of Yuruka and Riza. As they try to escape, Yurga's male classmates arrive, forcing the girls to hide underwater. The boys try to create a peephole to peek into the girls' bath. Finally, the girls are able to leave unseen when boys are able to create a peephole, only to be punished by Kaminami. However, as Yurga exits the bath, he finds a cup of bra on the floor. Later, the girls thank Yurga for helping them escape. Yurga upsets Fumino by revealing she left her bra behind, making her blush in embarrassment, as she perceives she has the smallest cup size among the three of them. High Stage begins sending maids to customers as housekeepers, and Kaminami's house cleaning services raise requests from customers. Unfortunately, they are short-staffed, so other maids approach Yurga to help Kaminami with her cleaning services in exchange for payment, and he agrees. As they arrive at the location for requests, the customer turns out to be Karisu, who is shocked to see them at her door. Karisu tries to close the door, but Kaminami uses her strength to pull it open. Karisu then pays for the service without letting Yuga and Kaminami inside. However, Kaminami, feeling insulted, attempts to barge in, but Karisu is so embarrassed that she drags Yuga inside. Yuga cleans the room in 30 minutes before Karisu allows Kaminami to come in. The place is spotless and Karisu even claims she cleaned it herself. Yurga consoles Kaminami for her feelings and persuades her to move on to the next customer. Next up is Yuruka's mother, who hired High Stage to clean and cook due to her illness. As soon as Yuruka opens the door, she is surprised by Kaminami and Yurga's presence. The two immediately go inside. Seeing Yurga in her house, Yuruka becomes so flustered that she does all the work herself. While eating, Kaminami rages again complaining about not having to do any work while getting paid. They then decide to visit the third house. Their final customer is Fumino, who destroyed her kitchen trying to cook. Seeing Yuga's confused face, she perceives his expression as a man's perspective of a feminine girl who could not even cook or clean and recalling the messy kitchen. Not wanting Yuga to see the mess, she hands them the cleaning payment without letting them in and even bows to apologize for the inconvenience. Kaminami wants to barge in and clean her house to uphold her pride as a professional cleaner. However, Fumino manages to keep them out for a while and orders cold noodles from Riz's restaurant. Riz comes to deliver, and they all end up eating together. Later, upon going home, Kaminami cries and sulks at the thought of the customers hurting her pride. Yurga consoles her, and she insists on cleaning Yurga's house. She cleans his house and tends to his younger siblings and him. Later, Fumino accidentally falls asleep in Carissa's class, 
earning her wrath. The next day, Carissa is making a test for the students, but her laptop shuts down without saving the test she was creating. Hence, she is sleep-deprived the next day and tries not to nap during the exams. She wants to keep her reputation as a good teacher and refuses to embarrass herself in front of the class, especially after scolding Fumino for napping. An assembly is held after classes, and Carissa one of the teachers sits on stage during the event. She has a hard time staying awake, and just as she is about to doze off, Yurga sneezes loudly to keep her awake. Upon arriving at her apartment, she loses her key and encounters Yurga in the middle of her search for it. Hours later, she discovers it was in her handbag the whole time. Yurga helps her get home, but once inside, she falls asleep in the hall, causing an embarrassed Yurga to put her to bed himself. One night, Riza checks herself in the mirror and realizes that her bangs have grown quite long, so she impulsively decides to cut a little portion. However, her father suddenly barges into the room, causing her to accidentally cut her bangs too short, making her look like a cutesy young doll version of herself. The next day, on her way to school, she meets Fumino and Yuruka. They are surprised by Riza's new hairstyle and compliment her, saying it suits her. Suddenly, Yurga arrives, and when he is about to greet Rizu, she turns her head away from him, avoiding his face and quickly rushing away, which baffles Yurga. Upon arriving at school, Rizu immediately goes into the restroom to fix her dilemma. Sekijo comes in to discuss her new hairstyle for the new semester, and when she sees Rizu's new look, she believes that Rizu changed her hairstyle for her. Sekijo's enthusiastic reaction only leads Rizu to believe that her hair does not suit her well. During her tutoring sessions with the two girls, Riza decides to hide from Yurga under an unusual mask. Yurga is worried about Ogata hiding her face and perceives that perhaps she hates him. Unexpectedly, Fumino pulls the mask off, which panics Rizu, causing her to desperately cover her face in front of Yurga. However, Yurga does not notice anything different. The girls scream in disbelief when they see his dismayed expression. Yurga panics and guesses randomly. Rizu becomes confused as to why Yurga not noticing upsets her. While walking home with Rizu, Yurga tries to catch up to her pace and calls her by her first name. She stops and blushes, still not looking back at Yurga. Yurga says he wants to try one last time and guess. Riza knows that even if he guesses correctly by any chance, she would not be happy about it because it would just show how uninterested he was. Unexpectedly, Yurga tells her that she now has more facial expressions, and that makes him feel like she trusts him in his tutoring skills. She blushes, taken aback, and smiles to agree with him. The next day, Sekijo notices Riza's overly worn-out pencil case and suggests she buy a new one, to which Rizu agrees. The next day, Sawako and Riza meet for their shopping trip, and Sawako is excited to spend time with Riza. While spending time together, Sawako sneakily takes her to popular date spots until she spots Yurga and reluctantly tells Riza to go shopping with him. Sawako reminisces about middle school, where her classmates were jealous of her perfect test scores until she met Rizu, who did not care what her classmates thought. Sawako decided to go to the same high school as Rizu but failed to talk to her until their third year. However, Yurga confronts Sawako as he knows she was looking forward to spending the day with Rizu by her last night's tweets. She ends up admitting how much she admires Rizu, which Rizu hears. Rizu admits hearing Sawako's praise makes her happy. She then asks her to continue helping her shop for a pencil case. Sawako is so happy she trips into Rizu's chest. Sawako changes her hairstyle for the new semester and flaunts her pigtails in front of Rizu. During a study session with the other girls, Rizu becomes curious about new looks and asks about girls who change their hairstyles every new semester. Fumino suggests she go to the salon instead of cutting her own hair. A salon owned by the eccentric Ms. Karasuma, who is bored not having suitable customers until Rizu comes in. Karasuma suddenly finds her motivation back and decides to give Rizu a complete makeover. Rizu looks confused since it's her first time in a salon, and she only came up with Fumino's suggestion. A few hours later, Yurga is waiting for Riza for their study session, who seems to be late. So he decides to text her. However, almost right on time, the transformed Riza walks towards Yurga. With her lengthy hair extensions, blue cleavage dress, heels, and sparkly contact lenses, Yurga slightly jolts at the sight of a young beautiful lady who is about to sit beside him. He panics, heart beating too fast, and turns his back on the girl, failing to recognize her. When Riza speaks to him like she always did, he panics and thinks she is a stranger trying to flirt with him. He tries to divert his attention to his phone to text Rizu to come to study, not knowing she is just sitting beside him. The day finally ends, and while walking home, Yurga wonders where Rizu is and why she has not shown up for their tutoring session. 
He is also curious why a beautiful girl is following him. When Rizu eventually invites Yuga to her house, he tells her not to invite anyone to her home but eventually agrees with the intent of lecturing her parents about their daughter inviting boys over. Once he arrives there, he finally realizes she is Rizu after meeting her angry father again. The next day, Rizu and Fumino are about to throw some trash when they see Yuga and Yuruka together. Fumino maliciously thinks of a love confession when a sudden English statement comes out of Yuruka's mouth, who is in a tutoring session with Yuga on the English language. Flashback to the previous morning's conversation between Yuga and Yuruka during their English tutoring session. Yuga commended her for improving a lot in grammar, however, she needed more practice and fluency. Hence, an idea came to his mind, and he told Yuruka to speak English with him throughout the day. The first person to speak in Japanese would buy food for the other, and so Yuruka agreed. Afterward, the challenge begins, and they continue to speak in English until a dog approaches Yuruka. While playing with a lost puppy, Yuruka sees Yuruka's panties, forcing him to defend his honor in English by saying, I give up, which she thinks was the cue to speak in Japanese again. Yuruka loses the game, and however, Yuga still decides to buy the food. While Yuruka waits outside, two Englishmen show up to ask for directions. After she tells them the directions in her own way, they then invite Yuruka to a barbecue. Yuga comes to her help, but when Yuga protests, they ask how he knows Yuruka. His mispronounced response makes it sound like Yuruka is his girlfriend instead of his precious study mate. Because of this, Yuruka warms up before she flees in embarrassment. Fumino arrives at Yuga's house for her tutoring session. It's already nighttime, and after the session, as she's about to leave, Yuga remembers his present for Fumino's birthday and gives her a bag. Fumino corrects him that her birthday is supposed to be tomorrow but is still happy since she has never received a present from a boy before. She thanks him and leaves. Upon arriving home, Fumino is confused by the gift because it is actually a bra. She wonders why Yuga would give her a bra. Meanwhile, at Yuga's house, Mizuki is looking for something, and it's revealed that Yuga accidentally gave Fumino Mizuki's new bra instead of a special pen. The next day, despite her confusion, Fumino still wears the bra, adding three more paddings to fit into the garment. On her way to school, Yuga greets her and walks with her. Yuga asks her about the comfort of his gift which only adds to her misconceptions about his supposed gift. Later at their study session, Yuruka gives Fumino oven gloves, while Rizu gives her new chopsticks. When Rizu and Yuruka ask Fumino about the gift she got from Yuga, Fumino feels embarrassed and tells them it's a secret. They then ask Yuga, and he is about to tell them when Fumino keeps stopping him. He can only stutter the letter, B, referring to the ballpoint pen. She takes him outside, and during a hurried discussion, Yuga and Fumino realize their mistake. In the afternoon, Yuga immediately goes home to get the ballpoint pen he bought for her and desperately apologizes. Though his statement about breast size causes Fumino's heart to skip a beat, she gratefully accepts the pen. Later, Yuga is studying in front of his mother when she complains about the shortage of staff from her manager at her new store. He immediately volunteers to be there in her stead. The next day, Yuga arrives and it turns out to be a massage parlor with Yuga as the store mascot. History repeats itself when the manager leaves once again due to her daughter getting a fever. Due to the shortage of staff, he now has to do massages too. To his horror, his first client is Kurisu. She asks for a lower back massage to ease her muscle pain. He tries his best to massage her, and unexpectedly, she moans in sensations of pain and satisfaction. The assistant manager comes into the room and realizes he is a natural master after Kurisu moans happily. The assistant manager praises him, and this motivates him to do his work better. His next clients turn out to be Rizu and Fumino, who he massages into total bliss. Kaminami arrives next for a foot massage, but she enjoys it so much she knocks his mascot's head off in ecstasy. While he fails to notice it as he is focusing too much on his massage skills, Yuruka and her friends arrive in time to see Yuga get carried away. To keep his secret, Yuruka asks for a massage too. After a long day, Carissa wants to take a hot bath but screams extravagantly when she pours cold water on her head. She finds out that the heater in her apartment building is under maintenance, so she decides to go to the public bath. Upon arriving, Carissa meets Kaminami, who teases her for being her unusual self and taking a bath in a public area. Yuga, with his younger siblings Kazuki and Hazuki, also arrives. Hazuki compliments Carissa on her beauty, making her blush, but when Hazuki asks her to marry Yuga, Carissa becomes a little angry. Inside the bath, when Yuga is about to get in, his naughty little siblings rush to him and bring female undergarments. Yuga panics due to dirty thoughts and screams at them to return those at once. Meanwhile, 
Karisu and Kaminami share the sauna but find it hard to make any conversation when they are alone, so they decide to talk about Yuga's progress in school. Kaminami teases Karisu and admits how jealous she is of her milky white skin. Karisu screams and begs her to stop touching her sensitive areas. Meanwhile, in the men's bath area, Yuga is trembling as he hears the ladies' conversation. Hazuki slips into the ladies' area and is amazed at how pretty Karisu's skin is, asking her to marry Yuga. Karisu refuses, but it makes the kid cry. Refusing to hurt the child's feelings, Karisu changes her answer from, no, to, someday, making Hazuki happy, who then runs to tell Yuga. In a panic, Karisu chases Hazuki to stop her but slips and knocks herself out. The receptionist asks for the youngest man's help, and it so happens that the only young man in the bath that day is Yuga. Yuga carries her, but after a few minutes, when Karisu wakes up in Yuga's arms looking like a newlywed couple, embarrassed, she jumps off and scolds him for lechery. A crying Hazuki pulls Karisa's towel off, exposing her nakedness to Yuga. Later, Kaminami explains the whole situation to Karisu, who apologizes. Karisu reveals to Kaminami that she is without undergarments under her suit, causing Yuga to realize his siblings still have Karisa's clothes. At school, Yuga meets Rizu and Fumino and learns they are beginning mock interviews to prepare for university interviews, not realizing the practice teacher is Karisu. Rizu and Fumino start quivering in fear and try to run away by recommending a good food place for them to eat, but Yuga stops them. The mock interviews start with Rizu, and Karisu mercilessly crushes her arguments. The same happens to Fumino, who answers the first question almost well but is not able to dodge the next question. Lastly, Yuga is forced to do the interview as he is also a student who needs practice. During Yuga's interview, he tries to overcome his nerves by remembering all the times Karisu was not scary but ends up imagining her in revealing sexy outfits. Despite his embarrassment, he manages to answer her questions. During their study session, Yuga invites Rizu to attend a sample lecture at a university known for its excellent psychology courses. Just then, Sawako arrives with the same brochure, also intending to invite Rizu. Rizu decides that all three of them should go to the sample lectures together. On the day of the event, while Rizu waits for her friends, both Yuga and Sawako claim to be sick so Rizu can be with the other person. They hide on the other side of a bush, but Rizu expresses her sadness about not having both her friends with her, startling Yuga and Sawako and causing them to jump out and be found. With no other choice, all of them head to the event together. As they enter the school, however, Yuga intends for Sawako to spend some time with Rizu, based on her tweets last night about how excited she was to join the event with Rizu. The same thing occurs in Sawako's and they both end up competing. Sawako attends the math class with Rizu after losing in a rock-paper-scissors game against Yuga. In the middle of the mathematics lecture, when Rizu dozes off, the lecturer does not let this attitude slide and calls the attention of the two high schoolers, challenging them to answer an equation. Later Yuga walks down the hall towards the lecture hall and finds the professor praising Rizu's intellect. Noticing that the crowd seems overwhelming for Rizu, he immediately pulls her away along with Sawako. Yuga and Rizu then attended the psychology lecture. After the psychology class, the two feel awkward because of the lecturer's random topic on first kisses. Yuga receives a text message from Sawako, telling him to hold hands with Rizu. He immediately searches for Sawako and finds her hiding behind a tree near them. He runs to catch her, leaving Rizu behind. Rizu is then invited by some college students to have a barbecue with them while waiting for her friends. Later, Yuga and Sawako arrive only to find Rizu drunk from smelling alcohol fumes from the party. The two of them carry her to the park and drunk Rizu cries that Yuga and Sawako kept leaving her alone. She tells them that she has been looking forward to going together with the two of them since that morning. Yuga apologizes while Sawako attempts to take off her shirt as a sign of girl friendship. Later, while Yuga and Rizu are walking together, they meet Kaminami and learn that High Stage is holding a board game competition to win free meals. As Rizu loves board games, she becomes a maid so she can play all the rare games. Kaminami teaches her how to greet customers. However, Rizu loses so many games that she costs High Stage a fortune. Kaminami and Yuga end up stepping in to help, and Rizu scores her very first win, boosting her confidence. Unfortunately, she overhears Yuga and Kaminami discussing the cheating strategy they used. Yuga visits the swim coach's office and learns he is at risk of failing physical education. To avoid this, he agrees to extra swimming lessons. They head to the school's swimming pool to practice, but Yuga struggles and starts to drown. Yuruka, who is preparing for her upcoming competition, notices him and the teacher asks her to give Yuga some swimming advice. Despite her best efforts, Yuga cannot understand her instructions since Yuruka, 
being a natural swimmer, has difficulty teaching others. Just as the swim coach is about to intervene, Carissa shows up to remind the coach about a missing document. The coach immediately leaves, entrusting Yuga to Carissa. With no other choice, Carissa changes into a swimsuit. Despite Yuruka's attempts to help, Yuga continues to sink, so Carissa gets into the pool and teaches him the basics by guiding him properly until he can move a little. Afterward, in the shower, Carissa asks Yuruka for some shampoo. Yuruka hands her the shampoo and checks out Carissa's body proportions, which she deems balanced. Yuruka asks her about sports and competitions, and when Yuruka admits she is nervous about losing her next competition, Carissa gives her some advice that clears her head. By the time her competition begins, Yuruka knows what she wants and what she needs to do, and she easily wins the competition. Afterward, the headmaster calls Yuruka to his office to congratulate her and offers her a chance to study abroad at an Australian university. Yuruka is overwhelmed by the pressure of deciding and asks for some time. Later, during their tutoring sessions at the library with Yuga and the two girls, Yuruka becomes silent and avoidant of Yuga. Fumino notices her behavior and invites Yuruka to have a meal with her after their session. During their meal, Fumino encourages Yuruka to speak up about her concerns. Yuruka reveals that she was invited to study abroad and is worried about her relationship with Yuga. She asks Fumino if long-distance relationships can work. Fumino tries to encourage her, saying that maybe it's not such a bad thing. Just then, Yuga arrives at the restaurant to eat alone. Seeing Fumino, he asks if she is alone while Yuruka hides under the table. He sits in front of Fumino and immediately takes out his notebook to translate sentences into English for Yuruka. As he continues to speak good words about her, Yuruka almost jumps for joy under the table. When Yuga notices the movement and attempts to look under, Fumino screams, calling him a pervert to prevent him from seeing Yuruka. Yuga talks to Fumino about why Yuruka is avoiding him and suspects she has a boyfriend. Fumino asks him what he would feel for Yuruka if she likes someone else. He tells her he'd be happy for Yuruka but he'd miss her. Suddenly, he rushes to the supermarket for a sale. Later, Fumino meets him and tells him that Yuruka is not seeing someone. Finally, Yuruka makes her decision to study abroad but asks the president to keep it a secret from her friends, especially Yuga. The school holds its annual parent-teacher conference and Fumino leaves a notice on the table, worried about her parents' absence. The next day, Yuga arrives with his mom. The teacher praises Yuga for his hard work and mentions the VIP recommendation to Ichino's university and other prestigious schools for his future career. When asked what course he would like to take if he received the VIP recommendation, Yuga unhesitatingly asked which course would pay the highest in the future. This question leaves everyone in the room silent. After the conference, Yuga's mother advises him not to prioritize them but to consider their family as a goal along the way. Yuga remains determined and firm, expressing his happiness with his current path. As they talk in the hallway, Fumino exits another room and sees them. She informs Yuga that her parents were too busy to attend, and she is fine with it. Yuga's mother leaves, and Fumino has to leave the campus with Yuga. Meanwhile, Sawako meets Rizu, who is also attending the conference without her parents. A few minutes later, a university professor appears and begs Rizu to attend his mathematics course. Yuga and Fumino arrive and see Sawako, Rizu, and the professor creating a scene. Everyone is surprised, and Fumino reveals that the professor is actually her father, Reiji, with whom she has a strained relationship. Fumino assumes that he may have gone to the parent conference as well but Reiji clarifies that he did not attend the conference to meet teachers but to pursue Rizu to take up mathematics, as he found her skills useful in the field. He grabs Fumino's list of desired universities and discourages her from studying mathematics, recommending liberal arts instead. Fumino grabs her father and asks Sawako to take Rizu away. Sawako runs away with Rizu, leaving Fumino, her dad, and Yuga behind. Fumino and Reiji have a heated conversation, during which Reiji tells Fumino that if she continues to pursue any of the degrees she chose, she'd be better off living alone. Yuga panics and offers to let her stay with him, so they end up coming home together. Yuriga's mother agrees to let Fumino stay. When Fumino is brushing her teeth with Yuriga in the bathroom, she feels like they are newlyweds but brushes off the thought. Later that night, as everyone has gone to bed, Yuriga and Fumino are studying when they suddenly speak about Fumino's father. Fumino recalls that her mother was a mathematics genius. After her mother died, Fumino tried to excel in math like her, but her father became upset and slapped her. The next morning, they head off to school but decide not to leave the house together to avoid any misunderstandings. At the locker room, Yuruka notices Fumino has the same underwear from the previous day and compliments her on her new scent and shampoo, which makes Fumino faint due to anxiety. 
After school, Fumino asks Yuga to help her fetch clothes from her house, explaining that her father barely comes home early. As they are about to leave, Reiji enters. They hide in a cramped cupboard, waiting for him to leave. As her father comes upstairs and is about to open the cabinet, a call grabs his attention, and he leaves the house once more. Yuga comes out first, but Fumino takes a while. During this time, she discovers her mother's laptop, which Reiji had hidden after her death. They find it has only one folder with a star icon. Fumino explains that the folder contains her mother's thesis, which her father was hiding from her. It is password protected, meaning Reiji has not read it either. She decides to figure out the password and live a life separate from her father. Yuga wakes up and sees Fumino cooking breakfast instead of his mother. Fumino informs him that his family had plans for the day, leaving only Yuga at home. They are both tasked with doing chores. The day starts chaotically as they attempt to handle the chores together. Yuga decides to take a bath, but after a few minutes, Fumino rushes into the bathroom and offers to clean his back. Yuga turns red when he sees Fumino wanting to join him in the tub. As soon as she does, she starts to rub a towel on his back and suddenly remembers a flashback of her childhood, doing the same for her father. When Yuga asks about her father, Fumino claims that trying to fix their relationship is pointless and explains that they haven't been seeing eye to eye. She rests on Yuga's back and falls asleep. Later that night, Fumino wakes up, realizing she still needs to study. Yuga's younger brother and sister greet her, and Yuga tells her to rest longer since she deserves it. She refuses, so Yuga invites her on a date, which she agrees to. Yuga takes Fumino to the mountains, where they have a good view of the night sky filled with stars. Yuga starts naming each star, and Fumino is delighted to learn that Yuga studied each one. Fumino talks passionately about the stars, naming and describing each one. Yuga advises her to share that passion with her father, but Fumino disagrees, believing he wouldn't listen. She takes a sip of her tea, but it's too hot, causing her to lose her balance. Yuga catches her and tells her she has his full support and should try speaking to her father again. Fumino remembers a memory of her mother asking her what she would name a star if she could. Determined, she goes home and waits for her father to arrive. Gathering her strength, she speaks to him about her desires, but he rejects her choices, insisting his decisions are final. He claims his wife would have agreed with him if she were still alive. Fumino then suggests asking her mom and shows him her mother's laptop and reveals she knows the password. The file on the laptop does not contain a thesis but a video recording of her mother. In the video, her mother reveals she was never a mathematical genius and permits Fumino to pursue whatever makes her happy. Fumino goes to the balcony, remembering her mother's words about feeling lonely soon but assuring her she shouldn't feel bad because her father would still be there for her. Yuga shows up, and Fumino leaves Reiji with the laptop. The last recording is of a young Fumino claiming she would name a new star after her father. Fumino remembers her mother telling her she was happy she married Reiji and hoped Fumino would find someone who supported her as well. Fumino thanks Yuga for supporting her. She then leans on his shoulder and pretends to be asleep. Yuga understands and comments that she might be tired after doing so much during the day. Fumino says she is awake but asks if they can stay that way for a while. The next day, Reiji finally permits Fumino to pursue astronomy. Yuga reveals that his mother had secretly met with Reiji who handed over a token of gratitude for taking care of Fumino. Reiji explains that after his wife passed away, he fell into despair and once raised a hand to Fumino. Yuriga's mother gave him the courage to reconcile with his daughter. Having reconciled, Reiji decides to confront a terrified Yuriga about his relationship with Fumino. At a restaurant, while finishing off some homework, Yuriga and the girls talk about their future after their third year. When Yuriga asks Yuriga what he is going to do in college, he realizes he has been too occupied with his studies to think about it. Later that night, at home while his family is asleep, he considers Miss Carice's questions during their mock interview, his mother's words during the parent-teacher conference, and what he truly wants. The next day, the school prepares for its festival. Yuga is sewing costumes for his class event when a classmate needs some extra plywood, so he volunteers to get some. While walking, he meets the girls who are filling up their brims with udon. Rizu reveals her class is doing an udon restaurant, and Fumino and Yuruka are taste-testing her dishes. They converse about their roles during the festival, and Yuruka is the only one with a free hand that day, as the girls have packed schedules. They also discuss a rumor that any two people in physical contact during the fireworks will end up together. Meanwhile, in the faculty room, two male teachers inform Carissa that her part of the festival will be a lecture on the Roman Empire. To make it more exciting, the other teachers decide to put her in costume but they are a bit troubled upon talking outside the faculty room. 
In Fumino's class, they hold a meeting about their upcoming play. Sleeping Beauty The majority vote for Fumino to be the main character, but she stands up almost causing havoc, trying to explain why she should not be in the spotlight. Despite her objections, she is dragged away for the costume fitting. Yuga is alone, happily sewing some costumes when Karisu arrives to inform him the school hours are over. He then asks Karisu for another mock interview so he can decide his subject. The day of the festival arrives, and everyone is excited, nervous, and preparing for their events. Since Yuga is done with his roles in his class, he decides to help out in other classes instead of doing nothing. He goes to Riz's class first, where Riz's father has gone overboard and made 1,000 servings of udon. Yuga helps her sell as many as possible. While helping out Rizu, Yuga meets the swim team and discovers Yuruka and the swim team are performing an idol show. However, Yuruka's costume was delivered to the wrong room. Yuga decides to help them by searching for the costume. While handing out flyers he goes out of his way to search for the costume. A kid shouts at his mom that he sees a person wearing a costume up in the sky. So Yuga immediately goes to the rooftop, only to see Miss Karisu wearing the pink fairy costume meant for Yuruka. He explains the situation to Karisu and everything is going well until he attempts to return the costume to Yuruka, but the zipper gets stuck. Fumino marches around the festival, furious that no one will tell her who is playing her prince. Yuga accompanies one of his classmates backstage to help the swim team successfully, and Karisu ends up on stage as an idol instead of Yuruka. Karisu, in the adorable and perfectly fitting costume, causes the crowd to go wild. The students did not expect their reserved and strict teacher to dance in front of the whole school. The music blasted, and Karisa delivered a flawless performance, having memorized Yuruka's dance. Despite her earlier warning that she would rather die than sing, Karisa managed to sing throughout the choreography. Suddenly, the lights turned off after the performance, revealing Yuruka now on stage with Karisa to sing another song. Yuruka wore a hastily assembled costume that Yuga had created from his memory and leftover fabric. The audience's uproar filled the stadium as the performance came to an end. Before the crowd dispersed, the group on stage advertised Riza Zudan to help reach the needed 1,000 orders. Although the food was advertised and raised over 200 orders, Yuga was still worried about failing to reach the quota, so he continued giving out flyers after the performance. While handing out flyers, a student from Fumino's group approached him. She introduced herself and promised that they would help sell Riza Zudan if he helped them with their play. Yuga immediately agreed and followed her, not knowing she planned to capture Fumino's prince to be in the play. She instructed him to change into some staff clothes, but Yuga mistakenly put on the cat costume that Karisa was supposed to wear. Initially confused, he decided to go out anyway. As soon as he opened the door, the two male teachers who had been searching for the specific cat costume ran towards him. Reflexively, Yuga bolted, trying to escape them. With Yuga missing, the Thorn Society began searching for him. Kaminami, alumni of the school who had helped her new club members give a good performance earlier, saw Fumino being led to the stage. Later, she encountered the cat prince and, from his voice, recognized him. Learning what was going on, she helped Yuga escape the teachers and showed him a shortcut to the gym. During the play, where the prince was supposed to kiss Sleeping Beauty played by Fumino, the prince was nowhere to be found. The headmaster announced that the play would be entirely improvised and asked for a volunteer prince from the audience. All the boys rushed to the stage to volunteer, forcing the Thorn Society to protect Fumino in a mad brawl. Yuga arrived just as part of the stage began to topple, managing to save Fumino from injury. He was immediately declared the prince. Desperate to end the play, Fumino softly apologized to whoever was behind the mascot and kissed the cat prince, causing the crowd to go wild. The performance was a hit. However, Yuga, feeling awkward and blushing hard from the indirect kiss, immediately ran away from the scene. Despite his departure, Fumino continued the act and was applauded for her ability to adapt despite the play deviating from the original story. After fleeing the stage, Yuga quickly changes back into his regular clothes and sneaks out of the office, bringing the cat costume with him. As he leaves, he is spotted by the male teachers, who thank him for finding the costume. Yuga, feeling he failed his job, heads back to distribute flyers again. Eventually, Yuga encounters Fumino's classmates, who do not know he is the one behind the cat prince costume. The Thorn Society angrily believes another boy kissed Fumino, so Yuga keeps his identity a secret. Meanwhile, Fumino mistakenly believes Kaminami was the one in the costume, but Kaminami denies it. People from the audience who saw the flyer Yuga dropped while running away head to the Udan stall, curious about the identity of the prince. As more people line up for the Udan, Fumino and Yuruka help out in selling the food. During a break, Rizu and Yuga share a bowl of Udan, 
causing a short, couple-like moment when they both eat the same noodle strand. A kid teases them, and they blush and move away from each other. Inspired by this, Yuga comes up with an idea to sell Morudan. He realizes that couples from outside the campus are probably there for the fireworks and the jinx that comes with it. Kaminami advertises a couple's promo, creating an even longer line at the Udan stall. Eventually, they sell out before the end of the day. As night falls, the time for the jinx arrives. Fumino's group pushes her towards Yuga to help her flourish their relationship, Sekijo pushes Riza towards Yuga, and Yuruka pushes herself as well. All three girls end up falling on top of Yuga, who is standing in front of them, causing him to fall over onto Kurisu and Kaminami. All five of them tumble to the ground. The first firework fails to light, causing a brief pause. As the announcer begins the countdown again, the fireworks finally ignite. Yuga is helped to his feet by a girl just as the first firework lights up, completing the jinx. However, he has no idea who the girl is. He sees the girls, including Kaminami and Kurisu, enjoying the fireworks display. The next day, Yuga has a mock exam with Kurisu and impresses her with his skills and passion for achieving a major in basic education. Some time later, Yuga passes his second mock interview, revealing his plans to become a teacher. Yuruka is accepted to the Australian University on a sports scholarship. Fumino passes mathematics and begins studying astronomy, while Riza passes English and begins studying psychology. Kaminami is accepted into medical school. In the end, Yuga almost misses saying goodbye to Yuruka at the airport but is driven there by Kurisu. As he rushes to say goodbye, he trips and is helped to his feet by Yuruka, suggesting it was Yuruka he was jinxed to end up with. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Until next time, take care.